Under the category of movies that suck, <laughs> G.I. Joe's Snake Eyes. Woo, that movie was bad. All sorts of bad. Several levels deep of cocaine bad. It starred, though, I was really excited about it because, number one, it's a Snake Eyes movie. Number two, it has Henry Golding in it, who is fantastic. Number three, I'm a big fan of the show Warrior, and Andrew Koji was in it. And it's like, yes, so much yes. <laughs> you don't have to do a lot in this Snake Eyes movie to make me happy. And somehow, they found a way to make everybody unhappy. A truly terrible movie um, with just some of the strangest, oddest choices. Like, we're going to have all this ninja sword fighting action, but we're going to make sure you can't see a frame of it. It's mm -hmm. like it's just one of the dumbest things ever. Well, then you guys remember they had Transformers Beast Wars come out. And at the end of it, for spoiler alert, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, you know, at the end, in the post credit scene, they introduced G.I. Joe, which got a lot of people wondering, oh, are they going to do a G.I. Joe Transformers crossover? Of course, the box office results of Transformers Beast War may hinder that. But Henry Golding is saying, wait a minute. Paramount's got big plans for G.I. Joe. Big plans. Big plans. This comes to us from the folks over at Superhero Hype who said this. Snake Eyes actor Henry Golding says that Paramount has some grand, grand plans for the G.I. Joe franchise. <laughs> Speaking with comicbook.com, Golding provided a brief update regarding what the future of G.I. Joe franchise might look at look like i mean says henry Le uh, lorenzo de bonaventura is a busy man and a phenomenal producer and it's in safe hands golding said whatever happens i think it's going to be a combination of what has come and what is to come well of course that's profound i mean by the way that's, that's that is profound that's literally how all of life works that's that's that, that's how the timeline generally flows but okay <laughs> then he f followed up by saying i think paramount have some grand grand plans mm -hmm. all right <clears throat> This brings up a question. I don't personally know anybody. Not, I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm just saying I don't personally know anybody that doesn't have a fond place in their heart for G.I. Joe. Right? Everybody's got a pleasant place in their heart for G.I. Joe from the nostalgia or, or whatever it is. And I think everybody would love to see a good or great G.I. Yeah, that's a great picture. A, a great good picture. or great G.I. Joe movie. I think we all <laughs> would love that. I also don't know anybody that liked any of the G.I. Joe movies, um, particularly Snake Eyes. I think I know a couple of people that know that like the one Channing Tatum or The Rock was in, but I don't know. I don't personally know anybody that liked the Snake Eyes movie. I'm sh Again, I'm sure they exist. I'm sure some of you might like it. I don't personally know anybody that does. And Ray, maybe you can look up for me the box office result of that oh, G.I. Joe Snake yeah, Eyes. Is it even listed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> been delisted. Uh, let's, let's, see. let's see. Hold on. Let's check it, it out. Was uh, it demonetized. I had demonetized. Um, but I just, I just don't know anybody. What, what do you got? Well, we got a four zero, forty million maybe. worldwide. Worldwide. Are we talking about Snake Eyes or Snake Eyes? A GI Joe spinoff centered around character Snake Eyes. Henry Gold Golding, forty million worldwide. I didn't know it was that low. Opening wow. Was thirteen million. I didn't know it was 40 million. 28 million domestically, 11 million internationally. Did that even cost cover the catering costs? Oh, wow. Boy. Of the movie? No, we got to Okay. Look I mean, okay, not if so... Vin Diesel was on set. No, with all the friends. Vin <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I Listen, all all due respect to Henry and I love him. I mean, by the way, he's one of my picks to maybe even be the next Bond. I think Henry would be a fabulous Bond. All due respect to him. And all due respect to Paramount, who I like very much. I like the studio. They've they've done some really, really good things, despite the fact that they're in big financial trouble and the hardships they've had. They've done some really cool projects. And I actually like a lot the way they handle themselves. That being said, what kind of grand plans can you have for G.I. Joe at this point? It's it's like an having like a huge pimple on your butt and saying, I got big plans for that. Like what what plans can you have? that are remotely interesting it's, or good. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, 
Miracle Made. Did you know that your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. Inspired by Nassau, Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so that you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. When they arrived at our house, my wife Anne loved the feel of them so much, she couldn't even wait for me to get home to put them on our bed. Miracle Made has self cleaning. These sheets are infused with silver that prevents up to 99.7 of bacterial growth leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. Miracle Sheets also have incredible comfort and quality. Miracle Sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice, if not nicer, than sheets used by some five-star hotels. So go to TryMiracle, that's T-R-Y-M-I-R-A-C-L-E dot com slash Campia to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40% and if you use our promo code CAMPIA at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you will get a full refund. So upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash CAMPIA and use the code CAMPIA to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash CAMPIA to treat yourself. Especially against the Transformers. That is like the biggest mismatch ever. Like, who, who's going to come out on that one? That's got to be the Transformers, right? Right, Rob? <clears throat> I, I, look, <laughs> to, me, to me, it's a tonal issue, John. I mean, th what I don't understand about the G.I. Joe franchise as a film franchise is when Michael Bay took over Transformers, Transformers was for kids, and it was a big toy commercial. But that first Transformers movie had state-of-the-art special effects. It had Megan Fox draped over the hood of a car. And it was really about a story about a boy in his, his car who came to life. And listen, I think I can count on one hand the number of times I have wept in a movie. The first time in that Transformers movie, when Optimus Prime for the first time comes rolling out of that dark alley with oh, the mist. Yeah. And then the camera starts doing the circle camera around him as he's transforming for the first time. And you hear that going on. I, I kid you not. I had I had liquid coming out of my well, eyes. At that the thing, point. Yeah. And the thing about it was, was it took a, a, a children's cartoon franchise and it made it functional. I mean, Spielberg was a producer on that. My problem with the G.I. Joe movies is it's always been goofy. They've never <laughs> they've never treated it. Like, if you look at something like the John Wick franchise, the John Wick franchise, like, it has the Continental, and it's got, you have to have a coin to get in these doors, and it's got a lot of a lot of stuff that could be goofy, but the tone is deadly serious, and the stunts and the action is incredible. And when they go to these European locations, and it, 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 it's a world that you want to be immersed in. G.I. Joe needs to be cool. That Snake Eyes movie should have been the John Wick of the G.I. Oh, Joe it should have been, franchise. It should have been great. And it should have been great. And and when you're going to have a movie that exists to show action and fighting, get a team of people that knows how to choreograph action scenes. Because we live in a world where we've got the raid. We've got the John Wick movies. The, the level of action and uh, combat that people are used to the fall guy they've talked about how the fall warrior. guy is, we were just talking about warrior and too. warrior the fall guy exists to show stunt work and and it's a it's an ode to old school stunts and there's a lot of unassisted cg i mean there's cg too but the gi joe franchise all they have to do is make it adult and feel adult and it's a it's always been whether you were seeing the this the Stephen um um the director who made the first gi joe movie you know who directed like uh, Van Helsing and the, the Mummy movies and mm -hmm. Stephen. Oh yeah. yeah. When I watched Stephen that movie, Summer, is that Stephen name? Summers? Yeah. It was just goofy, and I wanted it to be cool. Yeah. And if they made GI Joe cool, anything can work. Um, but they they still think of it as a kids thing, and they've got to make it appeal and make it badass. Yeah. And if they make it badass, people will go. One word, Supentor. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do not talk down on my dude. Right I'm there. not. I'm not talking uh, down. But here, 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 here. Do you think this is where uh, the property is hampered by, let's say, the guidelines that maybe the because they they want to sell toys, right? Yep. Obviously, they sold toys for this even the Rise of Cobra. They had a little rock, whatever. Do you? They think made that a hot toy. The, the properties. Rock. You know what? I I think that's a great observation. I I think 
I think what will pr- what will be a roadblock, <laughs> no pun intended, <laughs> what will be a roadblock to making these properties into movies that could really be good will be the people themselves financing the making of the movies, yep. the toy company, because they still want them to first and foremost be toy stuff. Listen, and I think G.I. Joe, a property like G.I. Joe and Transformers, by the way, and other properties like it, I think they are in a unique position where they should have a fundamental philosophical shift from being, you know what? Let's stop trying to think of ways to make money off these properties in toys, even though we are toy companies. Let's focus in on how much money we could make of them as IP on the screen. And let's make these $700 million films because we could make more money that way than we could in the toys. Because let's let's face it, Transformers toys don't sell the way that they did when I was a kid. Nope. G.I. Joe toys do not sell kids the way when I was a kid. Kids don't play the toys the way that we did when we No, were they don't. They pick up their iPads now, right? And so maybe if they had, like to your point, Ray, if they had a, a philosophical you know, shift and said, maybe G.I. Joe now is primarily a movie and secondary a toy. Yeah. Maybe they could, because listen, it's, it's still the old formula, right? The more popular the movie, the more toys you will sell. Yes. So maybe focus on making the movies as great as possible. Let them skew a little bit more adult, and maybe you'll sell a lot more toys. You'll buy them. I mean, they I'll lost a lot of money. Uh, how, how, you still see uh, Snake Eye Origin peg warmers right now on the shelves, like uh, for dirt cheap. I'm sorry, a what warmer? A peg warmer. Like, you know, where the toy it just sits there and no one buys it. What's a peg warmer? The peg, peg, the peg that they, the, pegs the cards that they, that they the slide on. onto the pegs that are on the. All right, I the thought store. you were talking about your sex toy. Oh uh, no, 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 that's a uh, okay. peg warmer. Peggy. Peg warmer. <laughs> I call that pegs. I am not familiar with the peg warmer. Yeah, <laughs> shelf warmer. I mean, anyway, there's a anyway, guys. Question is for you. What do you think about this? Henry Golding is saying Paramount has grand plans. For G.I. Joe, but I don't know what kind of plans you can have unless something like that philosophical shift happens. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.